Ooh, this video might start some contention, but hopefully it doesn't. Just keep it civil in the comments about this topic. I know it's a kind of a hotly contested topic a little bit, but... And I know I'm probably going to have an unpopular opinion with this. If you guys like this video, leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, click the bell button, all that good stuff. Let's get on with the video. So I'm going to talk about my, my feelings on DLC and downloadable content and why I think it's good for the industry. Because a lot of people don't seem to think about the positives of DLC and how it helps publishers and developers. And I'm going to shoot the breeze and talk about it. I did a video about this a few months ago and never posted it because a lot of people hate DLC. They think DLC should be free or should be included with a game that you pay 60 or $70 for now. Sometimes $70, but mostly it's 60 still but i'm one of those people that i feel like i'm way in the minority here with this because nobody really talks about the positive side of deal and they just talk about the negative side like, oh dlc should be included with the game why don't they include all the fighters why don't they include all the stages why don't they include all the story mode aspect same like complaining stuff you hear about online when people complain about dlc i've always been a supporter of downloadable content for the sole fact that most of the games that i've downloaded dlc for i've really enjoyed now there are some exceptions like street fighter 4 super street fighter 4 super street fighter 4 arcade edition that kind of got annoying when that had different iterations and upgrade passes and dlc and that that got annoying that kind of irked me but the game that i really supported was Dragon Ball Z. I bought every DLC for that. I really enjoyed that game, which sounds weird because that game was really terrible and really has not aged well, but I really enjoyed it for what it was. Because on the PS3, that's all, that's all you got. And it, it was way before I got a PS4. So I really enjoyed it. I bought all the DLC, all the, all the characters, whatever, whatever all DLC it had, I bought it. And I got early access, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta or whatever it was. So I got that. I got that like deluxe edition or whatever it was, back at, back when that came out back in the day, in whatever year that was. But when Z when Dragon Ball Z Universe Two came out, <clears throat> excuse me, I I of course bought a PS4 because it was only on PS4. So I had to buy, I had to literally buy a PS4. Literally bought the day one deluxe edition of that game to get early access to the season pass or whatever. And I, I've since bought every single DLC besides, like, the, the Stevie Aoki music. I, I believe that's it. I believe that's the only thing I, I didn't ever buy. That was the music. Because I didn't think the music pack was worth it for, for DLC. Like that, that kind of stuff is kind of stupid to charge for music. I get you have to get your money back to, like, pay for the residuals or whatever for the music. But then just don't put it on the... Don't put it in the game. Like, who's going to... I forget how much it is. It's like $10 or $8. It's not worth the money. But the characters that have been released for the game so far have all been pretty good for the most part. There, there's a couple that are kind of questionable. Like, Rebrand was kind of weird. But for the most part, all the DLC characters I've really enjoyed. And there's a lot of people complaining about, oh, why do they keep making dlc for this game why don't they just include blah, blah 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 why don't they make a new game do you people not understand if you support a game's dlc and add-on content i'm not talking about microtransactions that's a whole different ball game i'm talking about strictly dlc like characters stages whatever if you support that stuff that lets the developers and publishers know that you're enjoying this game and that it's okay for them to start working on a sequel. Now, Dips and Bandai Namco, I think at this point they're just milking Xenoverse 2 because it was so successful. The Xenoverse series was the most successful like Dragon Ball date, I believe, on like current gen consoles like PS3, PS4. I believe it's the most successful arena fighter game, I, I think. I just think they're milking Xenoverse 2. But now with Dragon Ball Fighters, I bought every dlc character i even pre-ordered the game got the day one edition so i got early access to like super saiyan blue vegeta and goku whatever so i've bought every dlc for that game and they still have yet to release a complete edition or a 
Ultimate Edition with all the DLC included. Now that might change when they do the rollback update for PS5, but it may not. I don't know. They may, they may just make you buy the DLC if you already have it already, if you buy the PS5 version, because I'm assuming it's going to have a physical disc release. I'm, ass I'm assuming they're going to put it on a disc. I hope they do at least. If not, I, th I know it has like a free upgrade thing, but I it might only be digital. I'm not too sure on that. Because they, they've been very vague on information on that. But to get back to the, the DLC point, I bought all the DLC here. So if that game was successful enough, which I'm pretty sure it was, we should be getting a sequel for that game because I'm pretty sure season passes or, and whatnot probably sold fairly well for Dragon Ball Fighters. So that's what I'm saying, guys. DLC is very important for the industry. And people overlook how important it is. I, I have friends that are like, oh, just wait till the ultimate edition or a complete edition of this game comes. That's not being supportive of the game. Like, if you're interested in a game like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Dragon Ball Z, some Dragon Ball Z game or tag game or whatever, and you enjoy the franchise enough, support it by buying the DLC. If there's an ultimate edition later on, you have the choice to buy it. To have a physical disc of that complete package or just skip it. Me, I buy, like if there's complete editions of stuff. I think the only game I, I never did buy the complete edition of was Mortal Kombat 9 on my PS3. But I did buy it on the PC complete edition because that's, I got it like way, way down the line. But for MK11, I bought the DLC for Steam and for my PS4 slash ps5 because i i upgraded to the, the the free ps5 upgrade but then my friend at the flea market had the game for like tw like 20 bucks or something the mk11 ultimate so i just was like oh i'll just buy it physically again they have the complete package or the the ps5 at least the ps5 disc i'm pretty sure the complete game dlc isn't actually on the mk11 disc because they give you a code inside for the mk11 like actual download so i'm pretty sure the ultimate experience is still tied behind that code which is kind of dumb they should have just put all the stuff on the disc because i'm pretty sure it's not uh but luckily i already had it all pre-downloaded and pre-installed and all that stuff because i bought the dlc when it came in but that just goes to show you that's how big of a collector and fan i am of mortal kombat and how much i enjoy the franchise i want to support it and make it be as successful as it can be so that's why i think people should stop complaining about DLC and embrace DLC and complain about the real issues and real problems with gaming like microtransactions, NFTs, cloud gaming needs work. Complain about that kind of stuff. Network infrastructure, online infrastructure. I'm <clears throat> looking at you, Nintendo. God damn, you need to fix your freaking online. Your online is terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Sony and Microsoft are better with online, but Nintendo is like god awful. But that's the kind of stuff you guys should be all complaining about. They complain about DLC. DLC is not that big of a deal, in my opinion. I enjoy DLC, the stuff I've supported and gotten from DLC. But I can see why people get annoyed with all the DLC you have to buy. Because you're, you're putting basically sometimes hundreds of dollars into a game. Like, I probably put 200 plus dollars into Xenoverse 2. Or the or let's just say the Xenoverse series in general. I probably put two hundred plus dollars total in Xenoverse 1 and Xenoverse 2 over the years. Which I'm fine with because I enjoy the franchise of Dragon Ball and I enjoy the franchise of Xenoverse. So I'm fine with it. If if that's if that's your thing you don't you don't have the funds or you don't think it's worth supporting the DLC, that that's you. But I'm just saying people need to stop Complaining about DLC being a thing. DLC is not going away. It's always going to be a thing. thing. Even if it's on, even if they have some of the DLC on the disc already, it's always going to be a thing. And you, and all you people that complain about it just need to deal with it and either embrace it or just quietly be angry about it. Because I'm honestly getting tired of people complaining about it. Like, or just wait for the complete edition to come out. You don't even know if they're going to. Fighters has not got a complete edition yet. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot 
hasn't got a complete edition yet. I don't think the PS5 upgraded version will be a complete edition either. I don't think. If you haven't bought the DLC on your PS4. I don't think. I don't know for sure. But I'm just saying. You can't always assume they're going to do complete editions or ultimate editions or deluxe editions or whatever. Complete versions of a fighting game or whatever. You can't always assume that. Nine times out of ten, if it's NetherRealm Studios or Capcom, they will eventually. But they bank on people supporting that game. Like Street Fighter Six. You honestly think they're not going to try to get at least five, six, maybe seven DLC packs before they release a complete edition of that game? Maybe even more? Of course they are. That That's where they get a lot of their money back from production time so that's my whole point of this video i know it's going to be a hotly debated thing in the comments probably because people are like why are you talking about why are you supporting dlc why are you oh dlc is so dumb especially when it's on the disc yeah, okay when it's on the disc that's like a gray area if it's already on the disc you should probably let that kind of stuff be like free update and not actually pay DLC. But people wouldn't know that if you wouldn't data mine games and, and things. You wouldn't know if it's already on the disc. And just because the data is on the disc doesn't mean the DLC pack itself, the data for the DLC on the server, isn't going to have the rest of the data. It might have fragments of DLC on the disc. But the entire DLC isn't on the disc. I, I wouldn't imagine for the most part, for, for most games. I don't know. I could talk about this, to, this for like four 400 hours. Because it, it's something I'm passionate about. I embrace DLC. The things I don't like are day one patches, how big they are. How every company has to release five, six, seven different patches before a game is completely almost bug free to where it's stable. That kind of stuff is annoying. That That's annoying. Like I said, microtransactions are annoying, like Fortnite, stuff like that. Th th that kind of stuff's annoying, like all the microtransactions in those free-to-play games. is annoying, like multiverses. It's kind of annoying how much you have to grind. I'd rather just buy a version of multiverses that has all the characters. I want traditional DLC. I just want a base game. With a base roster. And if I want to buy DLC. I'll buy DLC. I don't like this free to play. Fighting game thing. Where you have to grind. For hours and hours and hours. To unlock characters. Or pay money. To get the digital currency. Or the in game currency. You need to buy the characters. That I don't like. That kind of annoys me. And that's where I see. Some fighting games going, especially indie fighting games, or maybe fighting games in general, might go that route. To where, like, okay, you don't want to pay sixty dollars for the game plus the DLC. Fine, then here's the game. Here's the game for free, but you have to grind for hours to get characters you want, or you can buy this digital currency for forty, fifty dollars, and just buy all the stuff already. That, that, that's basically what they're doing with multiverses, and, and that's annoying to me. Don't get me wrong, I like multiverses, but I wish it was a traditional game to where you had like characters like Shaggy, Tom and Jerry, Bugs Bunny, Jake, Finn, everybody like in a base roster unlocked already, instead of having to grind to get all these characters. It's annoying and monotonous. I can't spend hours upon hours a, a day playing that game i have other stuff to do i don't want to sit there grinding for like 12 15 hours a day grind a couple hours a week I already do that with switch sports you have to grind to get all the costumes and that i don't mind grinding but when you have to do it for hundreds of hours to get all the stuff you want that's when it becomes like okay i'd rather just buy the currency and just buy the character i'm gonna wait till all the characters are released for that game and just buy a deluxe pack that's like has enough currency to where you buy all the characters or whatever. That's what I'm going to wait for. And plus, I'll wait for them to like balance an hour or whatever. Because it's a fun game, but 
I just don't like the free to play aspect. I know a lot of people do, and people don't mind grinding, but I don't like grinding games for hundreds and hundreds of hours to get characters. Playing a game for hundreds of hours total is different. For grinding, doing the same stuff over and over and over and over for like hundreds and hundreds of hours is super annoying. I don't know. Like I said, it's it's a really weird gray area with some things like multiverses, but that's how I feel about DLC and why I think companies should be afraid to say their game has DLC or put DLC out. Just put it out there. The fans that want to buy it will buy it. And the fans that don't want to buy it won't buy it until there might be a complete edition. Or they, they might see a sale on some DLC or something. Then they'll jump on it. But just keep supporting the game with DLC, guys. It's not a big deal. Just embrace it. Come to the dark side. Embrace the DLC. Don't embrace microtransactions and NFTs and that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff is bullshit, and you, and you know it is, video game companies. You need to stop doing microtransaction BS. I hate that stuff. Anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thank you for... Oh, my God. I, think I, I gotta take a breath. I, I didn't, literally didn't take a breath for that like, entire, almost the entire video. But thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, all that good stuff. Bye, bye. All notifications so you know if I want to upload videos. Thank you guys for supporting the Patreon if you choose to. It means, it means a lot. It helps out a lot. A dollar minimum to just be supporting me. Three dollars to get a name of Ron Stanley, a personalized shout out. Or you can join my membership for five dollars a month. If you want to be really cool and just help out the channel every month with, with my YouTube checks. I'll just be honest with you guys. Shout out to go to Matt Y99. Reaper7734, Title Cow, Harry Fernandez, AJ Cottawa, Oliver Frederick, Marcus S, Zoa Adfi, It's Me, Charles, Joe, William Swift, Griff17, Griff Charlie McKeon, Reverse Security, Zoo Hall, Artistic Tama, Creed Layab, Just Drew, Ariam Insane, and my newest one, HHG Fan. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And nice name, too, by the way. I'm glad you're a fan of mine. <laughs> anyway, thanks for supporting the channel. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you to my members for supporting the channel. You guys are great too. Love you guys. Peace out.